This is Mike Arrington. I'm here with the Google Wave founding team. Uh, we've got uh, Lars Rasmussen, Stephanie Hannon, and Jens Rasmussen. You guys are brothers. We guys are, mostly the two of us. Ben. Yeah, the two, sorry, yeah, I didn't, uh, that didn't come out grammatically quite the way I wanted it to. So I wanted, you know, at this point now, everyone has seen uh, Google Wave, uh, has seen the demo and uh, developers here at the I.O. conference uh, now have access to it so they can start playing with it. Sure. Um, what I want to do here in this video is just talk to you guys uh, about sort of what the core vision was about this, when you first came up with the idea, why, what you wanted to build, do you think you've done that, sort of where you see it going. So who wants to start? I just want to say we hope everyone liked the demo. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it over I on YouTube. It's what on she YouTube. Said. <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say that people were probably pretty stunned by the demo. Oh, thank you. In a good way, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> right, I hope so too. I get to answer the question because it was his idea. So I don't have to be as modest as he would have to be. It works better that way. It works yeah. better that way. So it's actually, it's been, it's, uh, been a while since we, uh, where by we, I mean Jens, had the idea. It was back in 2004. We were, we were just about to join Google. They bought a little startup that... Uh, we had a mapping prototype that turned into Google Maps. And Jens and I started discussing what we might do after Maps. And um, Jens had the idea that we should work on this thing that became Google Wave. He argued that um, email, even though it's the most popular way to communicate still, was invented uh, quite a while ago. In fact, before the internet, if we, uh, if we look it up on Wikipedia. And he argued that it was essentially designed to mimic snail mail. And what we should do instead is to look at how computers work today, how networks work today. They've obviously improved dramatically in four decades and see what the best way to communicate would be. He proposed this thing he called hosted conversations then. This is what we call waves now. Listed this in this big series of uh, benefits over existing systems. The thing, the thing that caught me was that with these hosted conversations, you can do both email type conversations and instant messaging type conversations in the same tool. You've seen this in the in the very early parts of the demo. Um, synchronous and asynchronous, synchronous basically and asynchronous. in one screen. Yeah. That's exactly in the same conversation, and you can switch back and forth depending on who happens to be online at any one time. That's what sold me. Um, we didn't talk about the project for another couple of years. We had a great, great time building Google Maps with some of the best engineers in the world. And then in uh, the beginning of 2007, we picked it back up. Um, we started prototyping. This is all in Sydney with a team of four or five engineers. Um, and little by little, we came up with what became um, Google Wave, all based on his original ideas. Do you agree? Uh, yes. <laughs> one, That'd one be last inaccurate. <laughs> so you, a bridge version, I you, so you really started coding hard in 2007, 2007 with four or five people. And how big is the team now? It's about 50 now. 50 engineers. 50 engineers. Pretty much all of them are in Sydney. And we're in Sydney too. Everyone can come visit. Everyone can come visit. So one of, uh, one of the cool things about this is that um, you're not just launching a new web service. You know, obviously the service itself is, is pretty impressive based on the demo. Can't wait to try it out myself. But you're also uh, open sourcing this, parts of it. And in particular, right from the beginning, the protocols. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, you're, tr you're inventing a new way of communicating here. And uh, if this were, if you were inventing email for the first time, you kept it proprietary, it would obviously sort of limit the usefulness of it. Uh, and so can you talk a little bit about your goals with publishing the protocols and not, and not trying to uh, keep intellectual sort of property rights attached to those? Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Yeah. I think you can. Okay, right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, yeah, so look, and this has been, I was thinking from the beginning, uh, that we want to build, like you said, a new way of communicating, but we want to make sure it's open just like email. We want to make sure that you can choose your own wave provider. No matter which provider you get your wave account from, you can talk to anyone else that has a wave account. And we're publishing the protocol, or rather a draft of the protocol, I should say. This is still very much a uh, work in progress. And we intend later to open source the lion's share of our code. The, the primary reason we want to open source the code is actually adoption of the protocol. It's not a simple thing to build um, a wave system. We spent two and a half years on, on the first one. And so we think, we think adoption will go a lot faster if you can grab our code, look at it, and start out with yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and so we're envisioning this bright future of wave where it is a, a new accepted way that we all communicate. 
There are lots of different um, wave providers. Some of them will be cloud-based like ours, where you go and get an account from a Google or a competing company. Um, but also, uh, we envision that, that enterprises or techies will run their own wave servers in their own server closets. Yeah, sort of within the enterprise and behind the walls exactly. of the enterprise for, for exactly. those reasons. Right, yeah. and it's a very important feature of the protocol that if uh, a set of colleagues within an enterprise that runs their own wave server start a wave just between them, that that data will never leave that network. And in fact, if you, if you remember in the demo, we have this feature called the private reply, where within a larger wave with a, a large number of people, you can do a sub-thread with a subset of the people on that wave. If you guys are colleagues in an enterprise running their own wave server, you start a private reply within a larger wave, that private reply will never leave your corporate network. So we think exciting things will happen the more people that have WAVE, and exactly. we think more people will have WAVE if they have choice in providers and choice in where their servers sit. That's right. Yeah, and you, um, you guys have talked about uh, how you've been using this internally for, what, a couple of months now? Uh -huh. And you have yes. a couple of thousand Googlers <coughs> using this? That's right. Well, how sticky is it? How many people are you know, sort of sticking with it after they try it out? You guys must be looking at those numbers. Yeah, they're, they're very good. Yes. Very, very, good. Yeah. very good. Yeah, <laughs> you can talk on that. Um, I, I, I would moderate, I'd say, given how early days it is, it's quite good. And so we, we have just started. We, uh, we actually asked when we, when we offered our colleagues accounts to help us test it, we asked them how pain tolerant they were, whether they were the types who swim with sharks and walk on fire or people that like um, you know, less adventurous things. Yeah. And I think about, so the three and a half thousand or so users we have now, we're all the people that offered to do the walk on fire thing. Okay. I'm saying willing to be, try anything. Exactly. But may not be willing to make a commitment to anything. Well, I mean, so what we're looking for now is for people to test it, try yeah. it out. We mm -hmm. want to measure how well it scales. We want to figure out what happens when lots of people use it. In the, in the first several months, there were around about 50 wave users. And everything was all very controlled and calm and quiet and all the ways were super important to us. All of a sudden there were 2,000 users, all of them colleagues, all of them wanting to talk to us. Yeah. Uh, and so we learned in a very exciting way what it means to get lots of waves all of a sudden. And so we're, we're learning lots from it. It's exciting. And the core, product, core part of the product is the liveness. And um, you, know, you can see what people are doing all the time and waves become active or unread and pop up in your search panel all the time. And we need, need to learn um, sort of when, when that's useful for people and when it's not and how to kind of um, present information to them in a way that's useful so they know what's important and what they want to deal with. And so Googlers are amazingly vocal. Like we have learned so much in the last few months about how people are using it. And it's helped us change our feature set, improve our usability and just decide what to do with our engineering resources. Hmm. Amazingly vocal, that's true. Crazy vocal. And you were saying earlier that you definitely think this is a sort of Twitter killer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, it was that off record? No, no. I don't think that I remember, was ever. I remember uttered. saying. Oh, maybe that wasn't you guys. That <laughs> might have been someone else. I remember saying quite the opposite. So you saw the video that we did two months ago. One of the things that's missing is actually an integration between Twitter and Wave. Right. And this is another of the sample applications that we're trying to sell developers on building for real where you can install an extension into your Wave client that lets you get all of your tweets from all of your followers into a Wave. And then if you reply to one of the tweets inside Wave, the extension will tweet that into the Twitter sphere. And so we would estimate that that would actually improve adoption on Twitter. Yeah. And we like to compliment Twitter for being open and having APIs from the beginning. Twitter's awesome. You want to compliment them before you kill them. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want me using where you. Uh oh, the, the press people and Vic Gundotra are not happy with the use of the Michael, word Michael, Michael, Michael. Hi. Can we talk about Chrome? We can talk about anything you'd like. <laughs> I think we're done. I really, I really appreciate your time and congratulations, guys. Thanks Thank very you. much.